This is Hart with the Earth and Spirit Center Internship Program. This message is primarily for interns, but others can listen in. So what we're going to talk about is five different plants, and those five different plants are winter creeper, milkweed, viburnum, oak, and buttonbush. And I'm going to ask you, okay, first of all, not all plants are created equal. So some plants are angels, some plants are devils, and some plants are couch potatoes. Listed here are four angels and one devil. Tell me, please, which one is the devil? Is it winter creeper, milkweed, viburnum, oak, or buttonbush? And if you guessed number one, winter creeper, you are right. That is the devil, and the other four are angels. We're going to talk about all five. First, milkweed. Now, milkweed is ranked number 78 in the top 100 in the list of the top 100 plants. This is the top 100 angels, and they are the top 100 host plants in Jefferson County. Now, host plants are, uh, it's short for larval host plants. Host plants, for example, is a plant that a caterpillar can eat because a caterpillar is a larvae. So it's a very important list, and I will be referring to it frequently. Milkweed as a group. Now, milkweed is a genus. It's the genus Asclepius. Milkweed is ranked number 78 in the top 100, and it supports 11 species of, of, of butterflies and moths, including the monarch and the queen. One species of milkweed is swamp milkweed. The scientific name is Asclepius incarnata. And the swamp milkweed has been planted, I'm speaking as of, November, as of September 6th, swamp milkweed was today planted at Earth and Spirit Center in the wetlands. So we now have swamp milkweed. And so another, <clears throat> swamp milkweed is a wet soil milkweed. It's got a beautiful pink bloom. Um, and so moving on, butterfly weed is a, all these are sun-loving. Swamp milkweed, butterfly weed, and common milkweed are all sun-loving plants. There are shade-loving varieties of milkweed, but butterfly weed is an, has an orange bloom, and its uh, scientific name is Asclepius tuberosa. Now, it's a host plant because the monarch caterpillars can eat the leaves. Leaves are, leaf-eating insects are very specialized, and that's why host plants are important, because what we've done is we've cleared the landscape of native plants. We've cleared the landscape as a society of, uh, we've cleared the landscape of the variety of native plants that uh, our, our wildlife needs, uh, mostly uh, let me move on. I'm kind of losing my train of thought. So next is common milkweed. The scientific name is Asclepius syriaca. And it's, um, I'll just move on. So I'm not showing you pictures of this stuff because we're one, for one thing, that would be a lot of work for me. For another thing, I, would, I want you to dig, dig for some of that information yourself instead of just having it handed to you. If you learn how to dig, uh, then all you have to do is Google common milkweed and you'll find out what it looks like. Google butterfly weed and you'll find out what it looks like and you'll find out some other important facts and information about it. I've already told you that uh, milkweed is host plant for monarch. I've explained what a host plant is. Monarch way stations. Now, Earth and Spirit Center can, as of today, be a registered monarch way station if we choose to. Monarch way stations were set up by monarchwatch.org. Uh, it's a long time, 30, 20, 30 or more year old organization based in Kansas that has been a long time advocate for monarchs. And they have a registry that includes about 13,000 uh, registered monarch way stations in the United States. Kentucky has upwards of 400 monarch way stations lexington has lexington the city of lexington has a lot more than louisville at last count it was something like lexington has over a hundred 
Louisville has something on the order of 70. We need to catch up and surpass Louisville because I mean, catch up and surpass Lexington because for one thing we're about twice as big uh, and we need to just you know play that game and play it well. Next on the list of our five plants we're talking about is oaks. Oak is ranked now oak is a genus the, the, the genus name is Quercus and oaks are ranked number one, numero uno, on the list of the top 100 host plants in Jefferson County. Oaks support 346 species of butterflies and moths, including the greater oak dagger moth, the lesser oak dagger moth, the afflicted dagger moth, the retarded dagger moth, and the spun glass oak slug are just five of the species of butterflies and moths that are supported by oaks. The great untold story with pollinators is how pollinators need trees. Many, 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 many of the top 100, especially the top 20 or 30, the top 20 host plants, 17 of them are trees. The top uh, performing host plants are trees. That's a, another reason that we need trees, and you won't hear this uh, from uh, several organizations I'm thinking about that will remain nameless, are uh, supposed to be advocating trees, but they will never tell you how important trees are as host plants. Uh, so what are some species of oaks? I'm sure there are many. Exactly how many is uh, something I do not know, and that's a subject for further research. I don't pretend to have all the answers. I do want to put the ball in your court and say, how about research this for me? How many species of oaks are there? I do know that species of oaks include the pin oak, the bur oak, and the chestnut oak. Uh, there, there was an oak. What kind of oak was it? There, if there was an oak that was planted in our wetlands today and the specific variety escapes me but we have an oak in our wetlands and how many oaks do we have on the property I don't know uh, have, haven't seen very many oaks on our property but I know we have one newly planted in the wetlands the seed for an oak tree is what it's an acorn you guessed it an acorn Blue jays spread around acorns. So blue jay is that blue bird, uh, and it, it's in the crow family, and it has a, 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 a spirited, if obnoxious, uh, call, almost like a crow. And blue jays pick up oaks in the summer and fall. Oh, they pick up acorns in the summer and the fall. They spread them around. They bury them. They forget where most of them are buried. Therefore, the oak stays in the ground, and that's how many oak trees are born because a blue jay planted them there and the oak the oak seed, seedling will come up and then we mow them down quite often or if the if the uh, acorn is planted in a forest then invasive species like bush honeysuckle and winter creeper prevent them from germinating but that's another story but we need to know that Birds are important to our ecosystems because birds spread seeds like the blue jay spreads around the oak. Number three on our list of five plants is the button bush. It is ranked 54 on the list of the top 100 plants. It supports 21 species, including the smeared dagger moth. Now, the, uh, the button bush is in the genus Cephalanthus. What I don't know, and a question for further research, is how many species are, uh, of button bush are there? There may be just one. Some genuses, even though a genus is a group of species, some genus, or more correctly, genera, are only, um, uh, some, some genera only have one species in them. For example, uh, the spinous, the, 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 the species, um, the American beech is in the genus Phagus, and I think the Phagus grandifolia is the uh, scientific name, and there's only one species in that genus. It's not very useful information, but, you know, I thought I would share. Uh, look to me for all your trivia, all your useless trivia. Okay, so it's, it, okay. Very importantly, button bush is better than a butterfly bush. You, people with 
with the garden are so proud of their butterfly bush because it attracts butterflies. But the thing is, a butterfly bush is non-native. Uh, no, yeah, a butterfly bush is non-native. But button bush is native. That's why it supports 21 species of Lepidoptera, including the smeared oak dagger moth. Butterfly bush is not native. Therefore, it supports few, if any. It, it is the host plant for few, if any, species of butterflies and moths. So right here it says, do we want to be a butterfly borrower or a butterfly lender? We need to be butterfly lenders. That means so if you have a butterfly bush and you've got all these butterflies, well, not one of them is able to reproduce on that, but on that uh, butterfly bush. So, so uh, that you're borrowing other people's butterflies. Why not have a button bush, which uh, it s supports the reproduction of 21 species of Lepidoptera, not include, not counting other insects. We're not, you know, 21 species doesn't include, you know, probably several dozen insects of other types that are supported. So let's be butterfly borrowers. Let's be butterfly lenders and not butterfly borrowers. Next on the list of five is viburnum. Now there are native and non-native species of viburnum. I'll list some of the some some of the native species here. Viburnum ranks number 20 as a host plant, number 20 on the list. Out of, out of the top 20 uh, genera on the top 100 list, there are only three that are not trees, and Viburnum is one of them. It supports 81 species of Lepidoptera, that is 81 species of butterflies and moss. That means the caterpillar can eat Viburnum leaves. And since caterpillars are very specialized in what they can and cannot eat, it's very important for us to have as much of a variety as possible. We need a variety of native plants to support a variety and abundance of, uh, uh, of butterflies and moths, but also other insects. Key term, carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the ability of plant life in any given location. The carrying capacity in that location refers to the ability of plants to support animals. We need a variety and diversity and abundance of native plants in any given locality so that they can support a variety and diversity and abundance of everything else. Everything depends on plants. Not just any plants, but the right plants, because not all plants are created equal. Some are angels, some are devils, some are couch potatoes. We will, we will save or lose this planet by the mix of plants that we plant. Speci okay, viburnum is a shrub. It's not a tree. It's not a vine. It's not an herbaceous plant. It's not a grass. It is a shrub, a.k.a. a bush. So species of viburnum include... Viburnum dentatum and the possum haw viburnum, which is scientifically named Viburnum nudum. Now, Viburnum nudum was today, this very day, on September 6th, was planted in, at Earth and Spirit Center in the wetlands. So Viburnum nudum was planted today. So uh, just so you'll know, there are non-native species of Viburnum. These are two native species of viburnum next on the list winter creeper is it an angel or is it a devil winter creeper is a devil it is an invasive plant you should see it on the forest floor at earth and spirit center you should see it covering the forest floor at louisville nature center you should see it covering the forest floor at the uh, the mouth of beargrass creek or near the mouth of beargrass creek where waterfront botanical gardens is winter creeper is a devil it's in the genus euonymus now there are native species of euonymus but winter creeper is a non-native species of Euonymus that happens to be invasive. Uh, so there are non-native, native and non-native species of Euonymus. There are two forms of winter creeper. There, it, it, it exists in two forms. It is the, a ground cover. It crawls along the ground 
or it climbs trees. Now, when it, it does not fruit or seed until it climbs a tree. Repeat, winter creeper does not fruit or seed. It's not, it does not flower or fruit or seed until it climbs a tree. The thing is, it is very hard to remove winter creeper from the forest floor. It is very easy to remove winter creeper when it's climbing a tree. So we need to get out there with our loppers and our saws or our hack, uh, axes or hatchets, whatever we use, and make sure we remove winter creeper and other invasive vines from trees. Incidentally, not contrary to what some people think, not all vines are hard on trees. Native vines are not hard on trees. Grape is not hard on trees. Virginia creeper is not hard on trees. These vines should be left alone because they co-evolved with the trees. They want to climb trees. They co-evolved with the trees. Natural selection has ensured that our native vines are not hard on native trees with rare exceptions. So for the most part, let's leave our native vines alone, but let's cut winter creeper when it's growing on a tree. Let's cut porcelain berry when it's growing on a tree. Let's cut Asiatic bittersweet when it's growing on a tree. So next point, even though winter creeper, it, back to winter creeper, even though winter creeper is invasive, it is still being sold in stores, right? Here is a picture of winter creeper still being sold in your friendly neighborhood Home Depot. It should be a crime. It's not a crime, so we'll just have to have Vito break their legs. How's that for a solution? Okay, so we've covered five plants. We've covered all five of these plants in no particular order. Winter creeper, milkweed, viburnum, oak, button bush. Let's go down here and see what else we can do with this information and what else you can do as an intern with Earth and Spirit Center. Uh, how can you go deeper with plants? Using this information and all the infectious enthusiasm that you've gained, uh, uh, what can you do? Okay, well, find the name of a plant. Uh, find, the, find plant names here or elsewhere and especially native plants, and, and Google them. Uh, when you Google it, find out this information, the scientific name. Is it a bush, a tree, a vine, or a plant? From where did it originate? What's the color of the bloom? What's the time of the bloom? Don't get me started about what's most important. Okay, so when you Google these names, you're going to find a lot of information that is of interest to gardeners and landscapers. Fine. But you're not going to find any information about what it's the host plant for because that information you're going to find it in two places and two places only from me or three places from me from doug tallamy um, and from the uh, doug tallamy is a researcher who has provided much of this information you'll find this you'll find information on what's a host plant for what species or how many species you'll, you'll find it from me you'll find it from Doug Tallamy and you'll find it from the National Wildlife Federation website at a location called nwf.org slash native plant finder so those are the three play but and and so I'm just saying I'm just saying very important information that you're not going to find that's why we need to spread the word. Okay, so interns, documents in the shared folder. Look, look up, look, look up these documents. Tour talking points. Look it up. Look, see what it says. It really needs more information in it, but that's why I'm here to help you uh, flesh out that information. If you're a tour guide, what are you going to say that people care about? That's why this document exists. Secondly. Look at the management plan. The management plan, listen to me. The management plan is the heart and soul of our activity on at Earth and Spirit Center. Look at the management plan. One of these days you want to be able to do a management plan. You want to be able to, to take inventory of plants. You want to be able to select and recommend plant native plant species for installation uh, at a property, in a riparian buffer, in a pollinator meadow. You want to be able to do that. So look at our management plan and 
you'll be you'll be building skills just by studying our management plan you can ask me any questions you want about it and that will build your skills and build your repertoire of things to talk about in that job interview that you're going to be in very soon or sitting across from clients that you want to recruit for your business or standing in front of an audience that you want to talk to and tell them relevant things about why they should care about how plants can save the planet. Next, study the map. Uh, the image, uh, the map of Earth and Spirit Center. I'm not in charge of naming places at Earth and Spirit Center, but until somebody tells me different, we have a map that, sh that has lines drawn on it indicating different regions of the property, and those regions might be called the East Woods, the West Woods, the Middle Woods, the North Woods, the East Lawn and the South Lawn, or the soccer field, and not least of all, the wooded edge along Beargrass Creek, also called a riparian buffer, but it's the tw uh, 10 or 20 yards, 10, 10, 15 yards of woods between the soccer field and the creek. Study that map and we'll talk. Next, you can schedule a call with me. Schedule a call with me, especially Saturday mornings are very good. But schedule a call with me so we can talk about individually how you're going to grow and succeed at Earth and Spirit Center in your internship. Now, this is this says volunteers. What it means is I need interns to volunteer for this work. Of course, you're getting paid, but I, but I'm saying volunteer. We need a schedule of events coming up. I haven't had time to do it. I can tell you all the events that are coming up. We need someone to help write them out, tell what's what, and post them on the website and use other vehicles of communication like Facebook. I can uh, make you an administrator or an editor of the website and you'll have that much more experience using these wonderful technologies we have available to us uh, to to do the very important work that we're doing. No, another thing you can do is post to the Facebook group. The Facebook group is called Earth and Spirit Environmental Interns. Post to the group. Tell us how you're. Tell us anything. Tell us what's going on. Then there's a Facebook page. Uh, if you want topics to post to the Facebook page or the Facebook group, text me, email me, call me. Wave, flag me down when you see me driving by, but I can give you lots of good stuff to put into our digital media so that it starts to work for us. You can write up, let see, right, okay, Facebook event. What this means, write up Facebook event, this means we've got events coming up. September 24th, Pollinator Garden write it up. I'll help you write it up. But you write it up and you help us cre you create the event on the Facebook page so that the Facebook community can know the Facebook community can know what we're doing. And what else can you I, learn plants from this list and other. What did I mean by that? I don't know. Well learn um learn your lines as a tour guide. So that's about all for today. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, call me, text me, email me. Um, flag me down as I'm driving by. But let me know how I can help. Thank you.